It's the grandson of right thought. Welcome to the school of the marvelous light. How do you know somebody is what they say they are? How do you know it? If somebody says they're a math teacher, how do you know they are? We'll use a math teacher, teacher as an example. They say they're a math teacher. How do you know they are? Because of that degree on their wall? That's how you know they can teach math? Because of that degree? Because they got a t-shirt on that says, I love math. Is that how you know? Or is it because you saw them teaching students in a classroom and they were able to teach and you witnessed it? See, the degree on the wall may be a clue. You see? The t-shirt that they have on it says, I love math. It may be a clue. But the clues don't matter when you see them teaching, does it? Now let's just say there's another person that says they're a math teacher. They have no degree on the wall, no t-shirt that says I love math. But you see them get up before the class and they teach with great clarity mathematics. Then you say, where did you learn this? They say, it just came to me from above was poured onto me, the knowledge of this, so I in turn teach it. You don't get a salary for teaching? Well, no. I don't. Not earthly salary, no. I mean, but you're a better teacher than the one that has the degree. Mm-hmm. Because I got my, my information from the one who created math. Not from other men. I got my information about math from the one who created math, the one who created numbers. Do y'all hear me? So then ultimately, the way you can tell if somebody is something, anything, boxer, I'm the best. Well, we want to see you fight the best to see if you are truly the best. Okay, Floyd, you say you the best. Get in there with Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya, dog, he'll rock your shit. So get in there with him. He got heart. He gonna fight you to the end. He got speed. He big. He strong. He got knockout power in both hands. So get in there with him, with him Floyd, and let's see. If you say you the best, let's see. He got a hat on that say he the best ever. See? He got belts all around that say he the best ever. See? But when he gets in that ring, we're going to see. And then he proves it. Yeah, he must be because he's beating everybody else that we thought was the best. I mean, this man getting in there, he didn't knocked out Ricky Hatton. He didn't beat Pacquiao. He didn't beat Diego Corrales. He didn't beat... Castillo, Castillo, he, twice. He didn't beat Maidana, twice. He didn't beat Berto. He didn't beat Guerrero. He didn't beat Gotti. He didn't beat Marquez. He didn't beat Zab Judah. He didn't beat one of the greatest boxers that y'all don't know about, Emmanuel Augustus. Who Floyd, if you ask him, will say that was the toughest. See, that's how I know he's one of the best. But y'all don't know that, but I do. The drunken master, Emmanuel Augustus. But Floyd beat him. So Floyd is just beating, 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 beating. Not regular guys. He's beating. These guys I mentioned are all champions.
they're all, put it like this, championship level fighters. Put it that way. Some of them were undefeated before they fought him, but he beat them all. So then he proved it. So if he says he's the best, you don't have any reason to not believe him anymore. That's how you know. See? So the point of everything I've said so far is that this is how you know when somebody is an I am that they claim to be. They must do. Now then match this up with the word of God. That's how we know what things are true. The word of God says, don't be a hearer of the word, be a doer. And why does he want you to do it? So that you can show forth the praises of he who chose you out of the dark into the light. So that other people will see it and they will know. You say you're elect. You say you're set apart. Well, you must be because when you get hungry, you say, I don't even take thought of food. I don't take thought of it. So I don't never know that nigga's hungry because they never are acting like they are. Because they never are. See, those who are in the light are never hungry. So then when you see them, they shouldn't be complaining about food or if they're going to eat today or looking around worrying like the world does. And how many times does your master say to you, be not of this world. Don't do the things like the heathens of the world do, for they seek after these things of the world. You be not like them. Is that what he said in red? You see what I'm telling you? So the same goes for anybody of the truth that says they are who they are in the truth. I am an apostle. I am a prophet. I am an evangelist. I am a this. I am a that. Whatever they say they are, are they doing? <laughs> are they doing? See, because the wise man will never be saying he is something that he can't do. Wise man would never do that. Did you hear me? He will never say he is something that he can't do. Do you hear me? So if he say he a prophet, is he doing what prophets do? Now, all you got to do is go in your word and see how prophets lived. Well, the greatest prophet of all, John the Baptist, dwelt in the wilderness, away from the world. He wore rough clothing. He didn't wear silk and nice garments of the world and Christian Louboutin red bottoms and um, ball mane and shit like that that you worldly people wear. John the Baptist didn't do that. He wore camel's hair and rough garments. He ate according to Torah. He didn't even eat meat. Of uh, like beef and chicken and shit like y'all do. He didn't eat that. He ate locust and honey. He condemned the world of their sins. Convicted them. He told people the truth. He even told a man he was committing adultery, and that man who was committing adultery had John the Baptist beheaded. Simply because John told, told him the truth in front of the world. He said, you wicked, what you did was wrong. That was the king he told that to, by the way. King Herod. Y'all know about Herodias? Okay, well, y'all need to read and find out. Then you'll see why John was beheaded. So then when a man says he's a prophet today, that means that he will go straight up to the throat of a so-called king or leader of this world and tell him the truth of his ways. He will know them and tell him, them, tell him the truth of it, even if it may cost him his life to tell the truth of it. So when I say things like, Barack Obama had an email that they found where he ordered $50,000 worth of hot dogs. Your spidey senses should go up when the FBI says that hot dogs means little boys. 
It's a code word for little boys. So I don't know if Barack Obama bought $50,000 worth of Hebrew Nationals or Oscar Myers, or if he bought $50,000 worth of little boys. Y'all decide. But you see how I'm going straight tell it and who did it? You see? Just like I told y'all that uh, Donnie, you see, Trump, it's the great white hope for Esau, you see, the great white hope, how he so-called made Jerusalem the capital of Israel, made a covenant with death. The United States made a covenant with Canaan, the fake Jews, and you guys don't even know it because you guys looked at him as your great white savior eating McDonald's, going back to the American way when things, were, when things were good here in America. For who? Was it good for both? Was things ever good here in America for so-called blacks and whites? And when things were good for you so-called whites, was it good for blacks? Or was it really good for whites when it was really bad for blacks? And the better it gets for blacks, the worse it gets for whites. Which one is it? You guys just tell me. Just like I'll tell your Joe Biden about his pedophilia and touching on children inappropriately. And yet their people still went and voted for him to be their leader of their country. A pedophile. So what does that say about the followers of that leader? If he's a pedophile openly to the world, and there's videos all over if you guys think I'm making this up. I got one on my page with R. Kelly filling on your booty playing in the background. These are your leaders. You see? So if a man say he is a prophet and yet he ain't doing that, then he ain't no damn prophet. He ain't living outside of the mainstream world. It ain't evident when you see him that he's set apart. Well, then he ain't a prophet. That damn simple. When you hear him speak to you, you don't feel as if it's a great flame coming out of his mouth, burning you up. Well, then it ain't a prophet talking to you. I'm going to prove it. There was a prophet named Nathan. He was talking to King David. See what I mean? How they go right to the leaders. This is an evident token of a prophet. See, because prophets are set above the leaders of this world. That's how they can speak the way that they do. So when you know that, then you do that. See, when you are that, you do it. I will prove that prophets are set above the kings of this land. Read what happened when God chose Moses. Was Moses a prophet? Mm -hmm. Now, when God chose him, what does it say? I have made you as God. As God. So back to Nathan, he went to David and he said, there was a man that had a thousand sheep. And then there was another man, a poor man who only had one little good sheep. That he loved, took care of. The man that had the thousand killed the man that had the one goodly sheep and took his good sheep from him. He said, David, what do you think should happen to this man? David said, that man should be put to death for doing that. That is so cruel and wrong. How dare he do that? Nathan said, that man is you, David. And he was speaking of Uriah the Hittite. Who, though he was a dog, you see, being a Hittite, though he was a dog, he was humble. And because of his humility and being a servant, as he was told to be to King David, as he was instructed to be, he was killed wrongfully. And David admitted his fault. 
But it took a prophet to tell him that and humble his king, anointed one of God. He was humbled down by a prophet's voice. His name is Nathan, by the way. Samuel, Samuel, here am I. The Lord speaketh to thee. Hear the Lord's voice in their ears. That is a prophet. Read your scriptures and search about the prophets and see how they lived. See if they, they said, they cried out to the father and said, only I remain. Another prophet, Eliyahu. Only I remain, father. Take my life from me. I curse the day I was born. Live a hard life, a life of much sorrow, a lonely existence in the wilderness, crying out to their people, pleading with their people, repent, children, repent at your father's feet today. Don't be caught up in that fire. That's a prophet who lays his life down for the ones that he says he loves. You all. He doesn't search after riches and fame and the glories of men. He doesn't search after that. He searches after your heart to pull it back to the Father. The precious thing is what he searches after. That is a prophet of Abba Yah, who's above kings because he values things that kings don't value. Kings value wealth. Kings value their crown and their throne and their name and women and riches and wealth and the glories of men. But a prophet, he searches after the reconciliation of man. He searches after the healing of man and the redemption of man. And you search your scriptures and you see all those holy prophets that cried out to you, Israel that said, repent, turn back, that cried. <laughs> they cried over you and you won't listen to them and you never did. Because the scripture says you mock them, that you mock them for their tears and when they cry. <laughs> you mock them for it and you won't listen to them. You cast them out and you stone them and you kill them and take our lives away from us. <laughs> That's how you know is the point. Do you understand me right now? On the outside looking in. From another world. Sent to a foreign land. The ones that utter this from their mouth that admit this are those who are true not those ones that say yes i'm proud to be an american no elect would say that no elect would be proud to be from a place who does the things that this place does on a daily before the father and what does the father say about you all he says son of man Come up here to me. He grabbed me by a lock of my hair and lifted me up and he showed me you niggas doing what you've done. <sighs> to the innocent. The harm you've caused. The pain you continue to cause. The unrighteousness. In your secret chamber of imagery, it is written. Now I ask you, what does that mean? Abba took me by a lock of my hair and showed me the secret chambers of your imagery. What does that mean? He showed me your imaginations. I told you, you can't hide from thought and feeling. You can't. You may can hide your face. You may can hide the outward appearance, but you can't hide the inward. And you can't hide your thoughts from Father, and you can't hide your feelings. And that is your secret chamber. 
That is where you desire. That is where you want and lust for things. It's inside of yourself, in your secret place, where you think no one sees you. How dare you think the creator is not all powerful? How dare you think that he can't see you, that he won't sniff out your weakest thought and bring it to the forefront and expose Expose you when you thought, oh, it was just a fleeting thought. Abba didn't see that. He didn't take that down in his records. Are you a fool or what? Thus saith the Most High, I am, I am. I see you in your secret chambers, he says, in your secret chambers of imagery. Where you think of wickedness and sin. Where you conceive it. I see you. And I see what you all have done, filling up your lust. I told you, that's what it's about in this last hour. It is about lust. You righteous men, clean your garments today. I am not fucking around with you. You better clean up your garments today, you men. And you better quit yourself like men and stand up on your feet. Take control of your vessel right now today. Command it. Under your authority that's been given to you by above, from above. Stop being ruled over by your lower passions today. And rule over them. For if you don't today, you will fall. You will die. It isn't written already. It's written. It's in his word. Y'all know what it say. No effeminate man will enter in. So you, you of the world, when you see any feminine man, know he is not to be sought after for any type of information that will be of value to you. You should know that by now. Reading what Abiyah says. If that man is effeminate, he doesn't know who he is. It's obvious. If a woman is trying to change her gender, she doesn't even know who she is. She wants to be something other than what she is. Just like you do. Just like all of you niggas do. Y'all want to be some celebrity you look at. You idolize them. You want to be someone else. And you say, if I could be them, I'd be happy. You don't fucking know that because they're not happy. So how the fuck would you be if you were there? They look at you with envy. The simple man with a simple home, with food on his table, with a beautiful family around him, with a beautiful wife and beautiful children. He envy you for that, that celebrity that you envy with all the diamonds around his neck who can't get no sleep. He got to be on all type of pills. And then when he got to be up, he got to be on some type of shit. Who's being pulled to and fro because he signed his name and blood in a contract that he can't get out of ever. The cost was too much to bear. And you men, if you defile your body by opening up your ass for anything to be received in it. Then you have defiled the body that God gave you and you can't stand on your two feet as a man. You have fallen. You have flipped upside down. You are no longer a man. So that's why he says, I don't know you. I don't know you. I created this. If I saw this, then I would accept it. You decided to make it this instead. I don't know that. So therefore, I can't accept that. Y'all don't hear that. So I died the man that I once was is no longer. Everything that had to do with him is gone. His woman, his children, his mother, father, all is gone. And why? So that I could be who you made, Abba. And what did you make? This. So I rejoice in my true identity. And all of you who live in lies can't rejoice in my true identity until you come into your truth. It's that simple because you'll kick against me and you'll hate me forever. When I tell you who I am, you will never believe me. When I tell you I'm the comforter sent to comfort you, you won't believe me. Though I'm doing it. See? I'm doing the work. That prove it. So I'm teaching you mathematics with great clarity. I'm teaching you math you never even knew about, but I'm not a math teacher. See how you is in a pickle when you dealing with me? You in a pickle. I'm the math teacher that says I challenge all mathematicians because I didn't learn my math from anybody. I got this math from above. So now I'm challenging all of you. And the only way you'll be able to stand with me or, or against me, and you won't stand against me, you'll stand for me, is if you 
have been giving your word from above because our word will match. That's simple. It'll match. You can't overcome my word. See, that's what I know it. I know it. I don't think it or want to be or feel it or hope it is. I know it is. I've conquered too many times to doubt it. So I know it. And once you know it, then you can go out into the world with boldness. Like he says, the righteous are bold. Did he say that? And he says they're as bold as a lion. So I should be walking on the earth as a lion. And I do. Don't I? Like I told you. Tell me I'm not who I am. Well, then how am I doing it? The Holy Spirit is going to remind you of what Christ said. Check. He's going to reprove the world of sin. Check. He's going to reprove the world of righteousness. Check. And he's going to reprove the world of judgment. Check. So I'm doing all of the things that Yahushua said I'd do. And I'd be sent in his name. Isaiah. That's his name. That's my name. So that's you know, another thing that, here we go, see? Everything he said would happen, happened. Is happening. So in order for you to deny that, you have to lie. <laughs> As you see, you have to lie. Because you're saying, well, if the brother's doing it, how is he not I aming it? How is he not I am it? That's the thing. How can I do something I can't be? That's like saying I am a fucking, I'm the best basketball player in the world. Okay. And then I go to a court. There's Jordan there. There's fucking Allen Iverson is there uh, running point and shit. Isaiah Thomas out there and shit. Uh, Shaq. Kareem. Um, and I'm going to somehow beat these guys. Because I say I'm the best. Well, then I better be able to do it. Now, I go out there, I get blew out. I don't score one point. <clears throat> I don't score one basket. Well, y'all believe that I'm the best. But if I go out there and I score all the baskets and nobody can score on me, I'm blocking everybody's shots. Every time they shoot, I block it. You see? <laughs> I'm dunking easy as hell. I'm scoring at will whenever I want to. I'm throwing the ball up without even looking and it's going in. Then I probably am the best then, aren't I? Even though y'all didn't know that because I wasn't drafted into the NBA. I'm just a regular dude off the street. Well, living in the wilderness. See? You see? There's nobody introducing me to you. So you don't believe me. But if somebody came and was like, hey, this guy here, he is this guy. This is who he is. And he's does this, 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 this. Then you'd believe me. See, just like Yahusha said. Now, did somebody come and do that? John came to lay the path straight. I must decrease and he must increase. So the greatest prophet of all prophets must decrease so that Yahushua can increase. So all the so-called prophets today, do they decrease when they speak to you so that he can increase? That's the point. Do they take their star identity away when they talk to you and, t and say, this is who I am and this is what I'm here to do. Make Yahushua's name glorious in the earth. That's all I care about. Now, Yahushua said he would send one who would testify of him and glorify him. That's what I'm doing today. So to say I'm not him would be stupid and idiotic. Because that's all I care about. I'm straight telling it to you right now. All I care about is for the name Isaiah to be lifted up above all names. Because it is the name of my father who saved anyone who is saved indeed. I guarantee you that shit. You ain't saved unless Isaiah has saved you. And that's just the truth of the matter. I don't care what y'all say. That's just the truth of the matter. Or else I would have came in another name, but I haven't. I come in the name of Hisaiah. Simple as that. So, like I say, y'all can decide whether y'all think this is true or not. But you better decide quick. <laughs> you better decide quick. Silo, Mr. Lala.